Well, it didn't happen yesterday, but a girl by the name of Christine supposed to be here this morning between 9 and 9.30 to clean up this hell hole. So, we'll see what happens today. Yep, and it's even cheaper. It's only $125 for four hours. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, Lord, thank you. Thank you for yesterday and the correct phone calls that you allowed me to make. Maybe Christine will turn this place into something that I can get reinspected. Anyway, Lord, at least the toilet's done and the bathtub. Yeah, I did those. <laughs> anyway, Lord, at the cross, I'm placing the sins I committed yesterday. Half of them, I don't know what they were, but I had a few impure thoughts the end of the day. And those. They said, the foot of the cross, asking your forgiveness. And thank you for another beautiful day to start to worship you. I'll be with the devotions today that something you said through me will stay all day long. Yes, listen, your blessed name. Amen. Okay. In the Old Testament, where were murderers allowed to seek shelter? Cities of refuge. Okay, I got that one right. Let's see if I can bat a thousand here. What caused Joseph and Mary to travel to Bethlehem? Senses. Roman census. Good, I made a thousand today. All right. Now for the verse of the day. Mark 16, 10 and 11. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive, and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. Why this verse? After Jesus' death, all of his disciples were understandably upset. <clears throat> they were devastated about losing Jesus, and they were also afraid for their own lives. But after visiting Jesus' grave, Mary Magdalene encountered the resurrected Christ. After seeing Jesus alive again, Mary ran off to tell the other disciples who were busy hiding. Surely her news that Jesus was alive again would give them the courage they needed. But that was not what happened. The disciples didn't believe her. We shouldn't be so tough on them for their lack of faith in this moment. What we can see in this passage is that even the disciples had moments of doubts. So if you ever face similar times of struggling with your faith, you aren't alone. You are only going through the same thing that most disciples go through. And those disciples went on to change the world with their faith. You guys say amen to that. Wednesday, April 1st, stay centered on Christ. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For he died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is in our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Colossians 3, 1 to 4. There are four powerful evidences of a centerfold, of a centered life in Jesus Christ. You are gladly identified with Christ. You recognize Jesus as the authority of your life. You have a deep sense of spiritual and personal security. And you rest in Christ knowing that 
he is the master of your dignity. In Christ, you live a brand new life in a brand new way. When everything else is out of control, set your afflictions on the other who is in control. Everything you put your hope in other than Jesus will fail. Jesus Christ alone is faithful and changeless and will never fail you. Jesus Priorities by Scott Devines, Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. Scripture reading, Mark 1, 35-45. The man with leprosy begged him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. I am willing, Jesus said. Mark 1, 40, 41. In this episode near the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Mark is showing that Jesus' priorities are not the same as ours. People are looking all over for him, hoping to be healed. But Jesus knows that his main mission is to preach the kingdom of God. So he says, let us go somewhere else so I can preach there also. That is why I come here. This may have confused Jesus' disciples at times. And Christians today continue to be shocked by it. We understand that preaching is important, but our physical needs are also urgent. We want Jesus to meet our immediate needs first. So like the man with leprosy, we ask Jesus for healing. We may even come to Jesus with the same statement. If you want to, you can make me clean. And Jesus does say, I am willing. Jesus wants to be healed. Jesus wants to heal, but it isn't his top priority. His top priority is letting everyone know his kingdom is coming. He has come to save the whole world, but that doesn't mean he doesn't care for us individually. Sometimes Jesus heals us right away, and sometimes Jesus asks us to wait. But Jesus is always working to bring about his kingdom where there will be no more death or mourning or crying in pain. Dear Jesus, we are in a world of pain. Only you can fix it. We long for you to heal our needs right now. Help us to long even more for the healing of your word. Amen. April 1st, reflecting his holiness. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 6, 5. <coughs> Tennis players like to play opponents who play at a higher level than themselves. Parents encourage their children to make friends with upstanding peers. Teachers encouraging promising students to take advanced placement classes. Why? Because we can always do better. There is always a higher level of potential achievement. Fortunately, in most areas of life, there are examples of outstanding achievements to emulate. When it comes to holiness, however, grasping the concept is harder because none of us knows a perfectly holy person. That is, it is not normal today for people to have personal face-to-face -face encounters with God, the angel of the Lord or Jesus Christ, those who crucify pure holiness. But we can read from Scripture what happened to people who did. Their lives were radically changed. They became more holy. When Moses met with God face to face, it was obvious to everyone. Exodus <clears throat> 34, 29, and 30. That's why, that's why worship, Bible study, and communion with God are so important. The more we see his holiness, 
the more like him we become. April 1st, generosity. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always have in all <coughs> sufficiency in all things, and have an abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 a. For many years, analysis have shown that middle and low income people tend to give a greater percentage of their income to charity than high income people do. The difference isn't huge. Three plus percent to charity for middle low income families, one plus percent for high earners. It seems the more we have, the less we are willing to part with it. Jesus made a point of praising people who gave sacrificially instead of giving out of their abundance. Mark 12, 41 to 44. And Paul praised Macedonia churches who gave out of their poverty to help the church in Jerusalem. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 4. Behind every instance of sacrificial giving is the promise that God's grace will provide sufficient area in all things. Because giving is God-like. God's abundance undergirds it. Giving sacrificially and generously is a way to grow faith. God can't fill a hand that has a tice of grasp on money. God moves money into and out of open hands. Psalms 38. <clears throat> My guilt has overwhelmed me, like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no help in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. O oh Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O oh my God. Come quickly to help me, O oh Lord my Savior. Psalms 39. I said I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still, not saying, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me, and as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand's breadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. I made a mistake yesterday and read chapter 13. I was supposed to read chapter 12. So here's 1 Samuel chapter 12. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everyone you said to me and have set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray, and my sons are here with you. I have been your leader for my, from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed, whose ox I have taken, whose donkey I have taken, whom have I cheated. Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I have done any of these, I will make it right. You have not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You have not taken anything from anyone's hand. Samuel said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and also his anointed is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. He is witness, they said. 
Then Samuel said to the people, It is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought your forefathers up out of Egypt. Now then, stand here, because I am going to confirm you with evidence before the Lord as to all the righteous acts performed by the Lord for you and your fathers. As Jacob entered Egypt, they cried to the Lord for help. And the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your forefathers out of Egypt and settled them in this place. But they forgot the Lord their God. So he sold them into the hands of Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines and king of Moab, <clears throat> who fought against them. They cried out to the Lord and said, We have sinned. We have forsaken the Lord and served the Baals and the Anish. But now deliver us from the hands of our enemies, and we will serve you. Then the Lord sent Jeroboam, Barak, Joseph, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies on every side so that you lived securely. But when you saw that Nanish, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you, you said to me, No, we want a king to rule over us, even though the Lord your God was your king. Now here is the king you have chosen, the one who asked for, the one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord and serve and obey him, do not rebel against his commands. And if both you and the king who reign over you follow the Lord your God, good. But if you do not obey the Lord, and if you rebel against his commands, his hand will be against you, as it was against your fathers. Now then, stand still and see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. It is not wheat harvest now. I will call upon the Lord to send thunder and rain, and you will realize what an evil thing you did in the eyes of the Lord when you asked for a king. Then Samuel called upon the Lord. In that same day, the Lord sent thunder and rain. So all the people stood in awe of the Lord and of Samuel. The people all said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants, so that we will not die. We have added to our other sins <clears throat> the evil of asking for a king. Do not be afraid, Samuel said. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, nor can they rescue you, because they are useless. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people, because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you, and I will teach you the way that is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Yet, if you persist to do evil, both you and your king will be swept away. In love and memory of Dorothy E. Taylor, Mom, July 11th, 1926 to July 6th, 2014. God saw you getting tired, and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, Come to me. The tearful eyes we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. The golden heart stopped beating, hard work and hands at rest. God broke our hearts and proved to us the only takes the best. Uh, that was mom. We love her so much. <coughs> Dear Lord, I 
thank you for this day. Thank you for these devotions. Plus that added one. Lord, my family needs wisdom. Poured out on them every minute of the day. To get through the day, veering not to the left, not to the right, but straight ahead towards you. Please, I'm asking. As for my high school friends, please do the same. Every minute, pour out your wisdom on them so that they also don't bear the left or the right, but go straight towards you. As for my friends on Facebook that I've never met, please do the same. Every minute, pour out your wisdom on them that they may not go to the left or the right, walk the straight path straight to you. As for me, I need to stay in your wisdom. I need that wisdom poured on me constantly, Lord. My brain is traveling to impure thoughts too much. Please control that. I ask all this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>